We're going to be doing some rose pruning today. Since it's about that time for you to do your roses at your home, we thought maybe we'd go ahead and do a little demo if you haven't done it already and give you a show of, of how it needs to be done. So this time of year, between mid-January and about February 15th, you should be thinking about cutting back your roses. All roses need to have a break. If we don't give them a break, then they get stressed out, kind of like us. We need a break, they need a break. So what we need to do is cut them back. Uh, sometimes you can do it drastically if you need to keep them smaller, or you can not do it quite so far back if you're wanting your roses to kind of stay a little bit taller. So basically I have here a sample of the four main rose varieties that you might find in your yard. We have a hybrid tea, which is your long stem cutting rose. We have a Floribunda, which more is more of a clustered rose, a little bit shorter plants. The roses come out on clusters rather than a long stem. And then I have a ground cover rose, which is going to stay a little bit shorter and be more spready. And then of course I have the climbers with us today as well. So I'm going to take a little time to explain to you how to prune each one of those different species or varieties, I guess you would call them. So I'm going to start off with the hybrid tea. This is a Dick Clark, it really doesn't matter <laughs> for what we're doing because it, you, you're going to do it the same for pretty much everybody. So, the goal is to get about three to five nice big canes when you're done. And we want to um, have it look like a candelabra. We want it to be open inside so we have good air circulation. As you've probably discovered if you do have roses they do have issues with diseases and air circulation is key to keep those diseases at bay to help keep them at bay um, which is another reason why you want to give them about three feet of space so that they've got good air circulation around them and then if we can keep the center of the rose open and the airflow going in between the, the in the middle of the bush that will help a lot with mildew, rust, and um, black spot, which is kind of their three main disease issues. So, what I like to do when I first start doing the rose is I kind of look at it to see, okay, where's my main canes? Which ones do I want to keep? Which ones might I want to get rid of? So, what I'll do is, first of all, don my trusty gloves which when you're pruning roses is a necessity. These are called gauntlet gloves, which will protect your arm as you're getting down inside of the rose bush. So if you don't want to look like you just had a fight with a cat, an alley cat, this is very important. Okay, and then I have my tooling, my tools. I have a trusty pruner that I like to use. And I have a lopper just in case I need to get in and get some big stuff. Most of the t ones you can get with these smaller ones. So on this rose here, first of all, I like to go through and, and cut out anything that's dead. So obviously there's some dead stuff in this rose. So um, actually, you know, once I look at it, I can see that this whole branch right here could actually go. Um, I don't like to have a lot of a main branch with a lot of bigger branches coming off of it, so I like to get rid of that, but that's kind of personal preference. But in this case right here, this is not necessary. This is not really necessary. It's, it's spindly, and there's some dead stuff coming off over the side right here. So I think just to start this off, I'm going to go ahead and trim off that first big branch. Now I'm going to come around. Since it's a little bit easier for me to see it on this side, and when you make your when you when you make your cut, you want it to be at a 45 degree angle into the center of the bush, if you can. Not always does that happen, but if you can make it happen, great. If not, don't worry about it. The rose is going to do whatever it needs to do anyway. So at this point, you can kind of see there's some damage stuff here. And I want to get rid of this rose here, so I'm just going to go ahead and take it all the way down. And so I'm going to bring my pruner in here, and I'm going to lop it off. Okay, well that gets rid of a lot of stuff in the middle there already. So now we'll come back over here. Now you can see I've got, I've got this dead branch here, so I'm going to go ahead and just take that off. I'm going to take it all the way down. 
you just get it out of there because it's dead. And now that kind of opens it up for me to see where else I want to go. Now, at the base of every one of the leaves, there's a bud. So I want to choose where I make my cut so that when it grows out, it's going to go to the outside of the plant. So in this case right here, I am going to keep this one. I'm going to keep this one. So, and I'm going to take it down fairly low. So I'm going to look for a little nodule. There's a little nodule right here where there used to be a leaf. And I'm going to go ahead and make my cut about a quarter of an inch above the bud towards the inside of the plant. Okay, and then on this one here, I'm going to want my growth. There's a bud right here. It can go off that way. So I'm going to go ahead and make my cut right up here towards the inside of the plant. This one here, there's a knot. I want to get rid of all this cluster right here. There's a bud right there. I think I'm going to let that go. And I'm going to head, go ahead and go this way instead. But as long as we are getting our cut to where it's not flat. We want it to be able, if there's water, we don't want the water to accumulate on the cane and cause a problem. Um, there is an issue with sealing, the row, seal, sealing it. I usually, on cuts that are bigger than your thumb, I'll just take a little bit of Elmer's glue. You don't need anything special um, or just some kind of a glue. Uh, you can use a pruning sealer, but it's black and it can get kind of funky. So I just like using the glue. Basically, all you're doing is closing that up so that if there's any insects that might be attracted to a nice fresh cut, there, there are borers that can get in there. Um, by sealing it, that just kind of makes it less likely for those guys to even want to get in there. So we'll take a little bit of glue, and you don't have to be real fancy with it. And we're just going to cover that cut. So that's sealed right there, no problems from there. Okay, now here, as you can see, there's a lot of clustering going on right here, uh, coming off of this main cane. So I think I'm gonna get rid of that. I don't, I don't really like that to do that. It, it doesn't make it very clean when it grows out. So I'm gonna take my little pruner right here and I'm gonna lop it off and get rid of all that. Now you wanna make sure that your, your tools are sharp because we don't wanna crush the cane, we want to cut the cane. So there again, here's another one that I'm gonna, it's big enough for me to seal, so I'm gonna seal that. And now I'm, I'm going to leave this guy here for now, but I am going to cut him up. There's a little bud right there. If that bud goes, he's going to come up this way. So that's right where I want him. So I'm going to make that cut right there. And I'm going to take off this little guy here because we want it to be nice and clean. Now this little guy right here, he's pretty small. He's really close to the, to the ground. I'm just going to go ahead and take him right off at, at the cane. Now, when you make your cut, if, you, if you're going to take it all the way off, try to get right up to where it comes out of the branch. There is some natural healing um, cells right there at the base of these branches that help the plant to heal itself. So that's kind of the thing too, you know, sealing, not to seal. These right here, the plant, sometimes people say if you put something on there, maybe it inhibits the plant's ability to heal itself. So I choose to go with the big ones, seal those, and let these guys do their own thing. Now, if you have issues with borers, and you'll know if you do, um, I would go ahead and seal them. But I don't have really any issues with boring insects, so <laughs> boring insects, that's funny. <laughs> um, for the exciting insects, no, just kidding. Um, OK, so this one, there is a little nub right here. I'm going to go ahead and take that down there. Now, there's been times I'll get done looking at a pruning job and think, Eh, I could take some more of these back. So I might go ahead and take him back later, but for now, I think he's going to be okay. Uh, this bud right here, this one here, there's a bud right here. I want it to come out this way, so I'm going to make my cut right there. And on this little guy right here, there's a bud over here. I'm going to go ahead and make my cut right there. So now we have a nice open form. Now I can take this one off, and yeah, I think I will, because that's going to open it up a little more. So now we've got a nice open, 
you know, now that I look at it, I don't want this one here either. I want it to be nice and clean. This one's dead. So we're gonna go ahead and take that all the way down where it's coming out of the graft, the bud union. How these roses are grown is you have a rootstock and then they take onto that rootstock, they bud these, these stems onto this rootstock. And that's how you get your rose. It's also how it's guaranteed for you to get the rose that you paid for, Dick Clark. You, there's, these are not done by seed, and unless the, the original form, when you first get a Dick Clark, the way they do it is they take two seeds from two flowers, or two flowers, and they pollinate those flowers. So they've got like Mr. Lincoln, and they got maybe Double Delight, and they like the qualities of those two, so they'll kind of put those get together and pollinate them. A seed forms. Now in this, a rose hip will come, in fact, I think I have a rose hip. Yeah. This is a rose hip. And this is where the seeds are. Each seed in this hip is different. So what they do is they'll plant all the seeds in there, they'll grow them up, get a flower off of them, and if it exhibits the qualities that they're looking for, then they'll take that plant and start multiplying it off. So then when they get the plants that they want, they get a lot of the little cuttings and stuff on there. They take those cuttings and graft them onto the rootstock. And that's how you get this rose. It takes 10 years to develop a rose. So that's kind of gives you an idea of how long it's taken these developers to get the roses to where they are today. So now we got the hybrid tea. So we're going to put that also. Now imagine this were in the ground. You see all this debris that's down here and here. We want to make sure we get rid of all that debris. This one I kind of cheated because it didn't have any leaves on it. If you have leaves on your plant, as you're gonna, I'm going to show you with these other ones, you need to pull all the leaves off. So we want to get all these dead leaves out of here. The reason we do that is there's spores for the diseases a lot of times will be on these leaves. Diseases only grow if they have two things, the right temperature and the right humidity. If they don't have any one of, either one of those, if they don't have the right temperature, they don't have the right humidity, those spores will not grow and create the disease. But if they got both of those things, the, the spores will, will grow and cause the disease. Then if you leave these in here, when it rains or you water, it pops those spores back up onto the plant. If those spores get, like I said, the, the temperature, the humidity, then they can grow and start giving you the disease. So now we've got it nice and clean. And then I'll explain to you what we'll do once I get done with the demo. I'll explain to you what you need to do after you've done, you're done pruning your rose. Okay, next we're gonna go to the Floribunda. The Floribunda is not quite as open necessarily as the hybrid tea. There's a lot more little bushes and branches and things in here and we're not necessarily gonna cut every single one of those off. We can still leave a little more roses on, or a little more branches on this particular variety. They're not, it's not quite as critical to get everything out of the center. Although I am gonna to try to get the center to an open point, but I'm gonna leave some of these smaller branches, which is kind of nice. You don't have to do as much cutting. So first of all, don't peel your leaves first because you may end up cutting them off. So save yourself some time. So on this one, I'm going to first of all take all the, the dead stuff out. There's not a whole lot of dead stuff on this one, so I don't have to worry about it. Then I'm gonna take my crossing branches, the branches that cross across or might be too close to the other branches. So I'm gonna take this one completely off. This one's kinda in the center. It's kinda like crowding this little area right here. So I'm gonna take that one off right at the base. So now we're kinda opening up the center nice and open. This one, I'm gonna go ahead and take it to here. Now you can see we've got a pretty nice open little area. It's not as clustered as it was before. So I think I'm gonna take this one off. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and take it all the way off. Okay, so now we've got a pretty open, open uh, frame right here. So now I'm going to take, since there's a lot of clustering going on right here, I'm gonna take it down over to here. So that's gonna open that up real nicely. I think I'm gonna leave this guy right here because he's, he's 
pretty well established. I'm not too concerned about the growth coming up in the center of the, the rows. And we're going to cut this one off over here. And we're gonna, I like to get rid of this stuff right here. And let's see, um, this one we're going to do with a little bud right here that's gonna grow right there. <laughs> we're gonna take this one off over here. There's a little bud right there. Again, I want to get rid of this clustering right here. And we're going to go over right there. And we're going to trim this back to here. And I'm going to take this one over to here because I got a nice little bud right there. I'm going to take it down. And this one here. I'm going to let this one stay. Again, there's not really any right or wrong. Just after a while, you're going to get used to what you, what you, what you want to see. There is a little bud right there, so I'm going to take it right there. So now we have a nice open framework. Get rid of the, de the yucky leaves on the bottom. And see, I didn't even need to peel those leaves. Now, as you notice, they're starting to get some little spots on them. This is rust. And you can see on the back of the leaf that there is what looks like rust. And those are spores. Those spores are what falls off into the dirt and then gets splashed back onto the plant. Or it can fall off and, and land on the plant and cause it that way as well. Now, if I were to leave that branch on there, I would go ahead and peel those leaves off. So you have to peel all those leaves off on the branches that you're gonna keep. But I already cut those branches off, I don't need to worry about it. So there we go, there's the Floribunda, nice and easy. Really doesn't take that long. Now this one is, this is a ground cover rose. And as you can see, there's lots of stuff going on in the center there. And these, a lot of times, you can just take a hedge prune or two. You don't have to get all crazy. But this one here, I decided to do, because there's a lot of dead stuff in here, and you can see dead, it's either real brittle or you can you can you'll see the buds you can see this one's got some buds on it or you can take and scrape the branch with your pruner and if it's green underneath there's still life or if it breaks real easy there's usually there's death there so i'm going to take out the dead stuff right off the bat and this one here has got a pretty dead branch right here that's got a lot of stuff coming off of it and if I can just get in here with my pruners I don't want to cut the, the tag off but I just might have to anyway. Sometimes I've noticed too that when you leave the tag on the rose even though it's going to give you an idea what it is those branches seem to die. I don't know what it is if the plant's just like ugh there's something around my neck I want to get it off of there so the branch dies off. Um, one way to do get around that is to make little markers or make a map, map of your garden if you have a lot of roses. So I know sometimes as we get older, we seem to forget what those roses are. Then I'm going to go ahead and take this one off completely at the base. And that got rid of, oh, see, and this one also had the other tag on it. So again, that kind of shows you take the tags off. Okay, so there's that one there. There's a big branch in here that's not necessary. I'm going to go ahead and take that off. Now I'll go ahead and come back later and I'll seal that. And take that out of there. Okay. And there's another dead branch there. Another dead branch here. Another dead branch there. And this is opening it up for me anyway. And another dead branch there. I'm gonna take off this dead one here. This is starting to turn a little yellow right here, so I think I'm gonna take this one down a ways. Okay, then... So now I'm just going to give a general haircut. Like I said, you could pretty much take a hedge pruner to these 
and they'd be fine with it. There was a, um, a book I was reading when I was studying for the test to become certified for the roses, and they were telling a story about a man who was mowing the lawn and was not paying attention and drove over his wife's prize roses. Well, needless to say, he did sleep in the doghouse that night, but he was, re re he was saved by the fact that about a couple months later, those roses started growing back and they were the best they had ever been. So it's okay if you cut something in the wrong spot, as long as you don't cut it off of the graft, these roses will grow back. It's not a big deal. So, and I'm really not paying attention where, which buds I'm cutting here because this thing is gonna grow all over the place. It, now oh, that one's damaged, so I'm gonna just take it off. And then we can just give it some snippy snippies. This is so easy. And we're done. Oh, wait a minute. Let me take this off. My OCD doesn't let me, is not gonna allow me to leave that there. And done. So that's a quick one. So he's nice and ready to go for the next season, for this next season. Okay, now we have a climber. Yeah. Climbing roses, ugh. you're really not going to be pruning a whole lot of size off of these. Let me, let me pull the table back and put this down here in front so we can, a little bit easier for me to show you what I'm going to do. All right, now this one, I'm gonna have to peel some leaves off. And I also, <clears throat> I'm gonna get rid of some of these, uh, though there's a lot of rose hips on here, a lot of um, done flowers, spent flowers. Maybe you just didn't get to it, whatever. And just give it a general haircut. We're not doing a lot of structure on uh, climbing roses. So again, you're just gonna be taking out dead stuff anything that's real spindly and there's not a whole lot of pruning on the uh, climbers as such because you want them to keep their structure now if you if it's grown too long you can always cut it back if it's um, not growing long enough for you then you just want to make sure you keep that structure the first year after you plant a rose usually on a climber you're waiting for it to get its structure up. And it doesn't do a lot of flowering, it's just doing mostly growing. So now I've kind of gotten to where I want it. And basically now all we're gonna do is peel off leaves. So you just peel the leaves off. Anything, I know, don't be tempted to leave the flowers. You need to give them a break. When we're done with this, we don't want any we don't want any 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 leaves on here. And this is this is going to take a little more time. Now I did a job, a pruning job for a guy a person in uh, Nailygale and they had a lot of climbing roses. <laughs> and that's what we spent most of our time doing was the climbing peeling leaves off the climbing roses. So again, once we get it completely peeled off Two, you'll be able to see more of the structure, but really, I, I don't, you don't need to cut up a lot of stuff. Just the dead flowers, any kind of rose hips that might have been in there. Um, like I said, you're just basically st stripping off old foliage. And anything that might be real clustered. I mean, if you notice a lot of branches all bunched up together, then you can always cut out some of the smaller ones, leaving your bigger canes behind. If anything's twisted, you can remove that as well. Uh, yeah, and here it's a little close to the main cane. Um, so really, it's not that big of a deal, these guys. Just, it's just time consuming to peel off the leaves. So I'm not going to finish, because you guys are gonna be snoring by the time I'm done, but that's basically what you're doing with your climbing roses. So now, Now you have all your roses pruned up. Now, is, now what you need to do after you've pruned your roses is we need to think about 
preparing for this season's rose diseases that are going to pop up. And unfortunately, they've taken pretty much everything off the market that really worked well. So we're left with this copper spray. This is what you were going to use for your rust, black spot, and mildew. So you're going to go ahead and spray the canes. You're going to spray your canes and the ground around it. And then when you're done spraying, you can use the, put down some alfalfa meal. Now what alfalfa meal is, is it's a slow release nitrogen. It has a slow release nitrogen in it, which is what helps the plants to grow. And so if you put it in there now, as the plants start to sprout and grow, they can tap into that nitrogen. Now it's not a high nitrogen, there's other uh, trace minerals in there that are going to help with other issues with the roses. But this is a really good pre or after you've pruned fertilizer that you can put on. I also like to put on some bone meal. This is fish bone meal, so it also has a little bit of nitrogen in it as well. But it has phosphorus, and what phosphorus does is encourages root growth, and it also encourages flowers, which is what we want on a rose. So I'll put some bone meal, I'll put some alfalfa meal, just follow the directions on the container. And then I want to throw in about a handful of Epsom salts around the base of the plant as well. If it's a small rose, maybe a half a handful. If it's a big rose, you know, a handful. Um, also, we want to use, <clears throat> what I like to use is, after that, you're going to put a topping of Malibu compost. And this will go over the fertilizer and the Epsom salts and just a thin layer around the base of the rose. Just try not to get it up against the bush or the trunk of the rose. You want it to be a little around more around the edge. Um, nothing, you don't really want to put anything around the base of the rose. Uh, you leave it open. But go out about an inch or two and then do a nice top, topping of the Malibu compost. What Malibu compost does is it jump starts the microorganisms that are in the soil. Now when it's winter time like it is now and when our, when our evening temperatures are below 50 degrees, the microorganisms really aren't doing a whole lot in the soil. They're kind of sleeping. So, but, but on those days when it heats up to 70 degrees, they're kind of waking up a little bit. They're kind of like, oh yeah, it's time to get doing some stuff here. And they break up the fertilizer, they break up the mulch, and they make it available to the plant. And so then the plant can start taking up the nutrient to the roots. Then it's going to start the little buds to, 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 to swelling and getting ready to grow and, and go. Roses pretty much are going to start sprouting right away. And there's some buds on here that are already starting to come out. So within about, if we stay warm, within about a week or two, you're going to start seeing new growth already. If you're not seeing new growth within the first two weeks, something's going on. So you need to investigate. Maybe you're not getting water. Maybe you're getting too much water. Um, any number of things. Maybe you got a gopher chewing on roots. Any kind of thing like that. If they don't sprout right away, something's up. Now, also, you have to watch when they're in this state. If we get a wind, it might help. It might kind of dry them out a little bit. So keep an eye. You might have to give them a little more water. Okay, another thing I like to put on my roses, and you can do it this time and now because there's no big old branches reaching out giving you pricks and thorns and rips. Um, I like to put down twice a year, spring and fall, the uh, John, uh, Bob and John, John and Bob's uh, soil optimizer. And this one here has good sulfur, it has humectic acids in it, which are things that are readily available to the plant. They don't have to be broken down by the microorganisms. It just helps give it a nice balance of different nutrients in the soil. And also, roses like it slightly acidic, so I like to give them a shot of iron as well. Um, you can use ironite, you can use fast stacking iron, you can use iron phosphate. Okay, so I pretty much gone over everything I needed to talk to you about. Uh, we talked about the fertilizer, we talked about the disease control, we talked about shaping up the roses, putting the mulch down. So now that I've taught you what to do, 
All you need to do now is just go out and prune your roses.